Welcome to Dodgers Daily. I'm Casey Porter. So glad that you decided to tune in. It's another day. It was a great day, a very busy day in the system yesterday as the playoffs started for two minor league affiliates for the Dodgers. Hey, you're looking at Austin Brubaker right there. Good morning, Austin. Good morning. He was at the Great Lakes games, the, the Great Lakes game last night in Fort Wayne, and he got to see that with his own eyes. We're going to talk about that first round of the playoffs. Rancho Cucamonga, they started the playoffs, and then Tulsa still has one series left. Oklahoma, series, uh, Oklahoma City has two series left, plus the playoffs as well. And then he had the big win at the major league level, 11-2 to over the Padres, so a lot to chew on. Yeah, certainly a lot to dive into today. Okay, so let's start at the major league level. First of all, the Dodgers, they won 11 to 2 over the Padres. And hey, you know, it's a 13 game lead in the division. The Dodgers have 88 wins on the season. That's not in jeopardy at all. But, you know, you want to keep that winning culture going all the way up to the playoffs. So it's good to play good baseball. And it was great to see Lance Lynn have another good start. And then obviously, the debut of Kyle Hurt. Oh, yeah. No, it's certainly yesterday at the big league level, a lot to like. Um, you got to continue to build that winning culture. You got to continue to push through, uh, build some momentum leading into the playoffs. And Dodgers certainly were able to add to that. And they were able to get a really good outing from Lance Lynn. He was able to show just the talent that he has. I know past couple outings before that hadn't gone exactly as planned yesterday he showed why the Dodgers picked him up he was able to provide length and he only gave up two runs something that is extremely valuable to the Dodgers and I'm sure we'll get into this in just a minute but the debut of Kyle Hurt man we both of us could not be more proud of that kid and proud of the work that he's done and super excited to see him uh, be on the big league roster. This is not the last announcement I think you're going to hear about Kyle Hurt this year. I will leave it at that. And I'll tell you what, we're going to get back into Lance Lynn here in a minute. I'm not sure as many times as I've seen Kyle Hurt pitch with my own eyes, which is many different times. Got a chance to talk to him on two different occasions for interviews. The last one released about two weeks ago, if you want to go check that out. I'm not sure I've ever seen him be as electric especially with the changeup and being in the strike zone as much as he was last night. Yeah, and that's huge for him, too, being able to keep that in the strike zone because the swing and miss stuff is very, very evident. You're talking about a 39% strikeout percentage this year in the minor leagues, which is unreal, especially for the workload that he has with 88 innings pitch. There's people that have similar strikeout percentages, more in the 50s range, uh, but to do that over 88 innings is just unreal. And you see it when you go and watch these games, just the swing and miss stuff. If he's able to keep it in the strike zone, if he's able to maintain that control, there's few people that are better than Kyle Hurt. And so just being able to watch his journey growing up from when I saw him back when he was doing piggyback starts with Lyle Lockhart Jr., mm -hmm. Uh, in Great Lakes uh, and to where he's been shutting down in Tulsa and Oklahoma City and last night in L.A. under the bright lights, under probably some really close friends and family members over there, uh, just being able to go out, make a big performance against a Padres team, against a rival, uh, and just look dominant in doing so. You can't ask for a better debut. And so extremely excited for Kyle, extremely excited for the journey that he has and for the future that he's going to have on this Dodgers team. Were you there last year when he threw the five-inning no-hitter for Great Lakes? I was not there. I was watching that on TV, but it was amazing to see, see him be able to pull that off. Even though five-inning no-hitter still counts, still counts, and he was still – was electric and provided a win for the loons. And so that was, that was excited to see. I was at some of his other yeah. great starts too. And just super nice guy. Yeah. And the thing about that was that was the rain delay game. So that was the only innings he was given. Mm -hmm. That was the complete game, which was five innings. And that was the first time I went, wow, this dude stuff's electric because he threw a 91 mile an hour slider. And I'm like, man, if you can throw a 91 mile an hour slider, you have that kind of swing and miss stuff. That is big time stuff. So, yeah, Kyle Hurt, what a wonderful performance for him last night. And I think the thing that was, you know, talk, I talked to him and I like to ask, hey, what's the one thing you need to keep working on to be a consistent major leaguer? And he said, I got to repeat my delivery. 
He definitely did that last night. You could tell that he took the adrenaline. And, you know, hey, in the spring training well, in the spring training performance he had, he was a little bit nervous. You could tell for the first couple of pitches. Did not show any nerves whatsoever last night. Total confidence. He rode the adrenaline, and he was in the zone all night. So I think of all the things he did, hey, I was expecting the, the change up. I was expecting the 97.8 mile an hour fastball. That's all stuff that we, you know, I knew he was going to strike some guys out in two innings. The thing that that was the most impressive to me that's going to determine whether he is a consistent major leaguer or not, he was in the strike zone last night. I believe he only threw five balls the entire night. Yeah, that and that that's really good. And if he continue if he can continue to do that, uh he's going to be in the big leagues for a long time. He's got the talent to do so. Yeah, 145 strikeouts in 88.1 innings. You mentioned 39% strikeout rate. Is that exactly what it was, Austin? Yes. And Alex Friedman, I know, tweeted the play-by-play voice for the Oklahoma City Dodgers. That is the highest strikeout rate in all the minor leagues. So, Kyle Hurt, big-time swing and miss stuff. And we know that that swing and miss stuff plays in the playoffs, especially out of the bullpen. Oh yeah, no swing. Being able to get those swings and misses are huge in a postseason series. It's huge in uh, an environment where you're dealing with short sample sizes, especially. And no, he's going to add a lot to this Dodgers bullpen, and very well could be used in the postseason. Lance Lynn's kind of one of those roller coasters, man. It's like okay at the beginning, hey, we might have unlocked something, and it's like. You know, it's wow. What the, the last three performances? It's like wow. What do we have here? And then, you, but you've always had the length. You know, you mentioned that he's always given you six innings. Last night, seven innings. Last night, he is very good. He had six pitches. He was throwing the changeup that was turning right. He was throwing a, a fastball that was out oh, ninety four, ninety five. So not overpowering. But he was in the zone for the most part. He had the slider and the cutter that was turning left. So he had all the different shapes that the Dodgers. You know, the Dodgers love. Their pitchers to have all the shapes, you know, the riding fastball at the top, the tumbling changeup at the bottom, the right turning, whether it be a changeup or sinker, then the left turning cutter and and slider. He has all of those shapes. So whenever he can go seven innings like that, that is a huge boost as the Dodgers continue with the 13 game lead in the division as they continue to kind of map out what their playoff pitching is going to look like. Yeah, for sure. Just being able to provide that length just really adds to this team. I know that all of the pitching struggles that they've had, um, just with everything that's gone gone on with everything in here, just being able to provide that is incredibly valuable. But to be able to do that effectively, too, is something that I think is really needed. And you talked about all the different shapes seem to be working last night. I think Mm -hmm. that's part of the key of what makes – Lance Lynn really effective when he is effective. Um, only gave up one home run yesterday too, which I know the home run ball has yes. been something that has been uh, causing some of the downfall of him over the past couple of starts. If he can keep it to just one home run in an outing in a playoff environment, that's going to be huge. And so just limiting some of the extreme barrels uh, limiting some of the hard contact uh, is going to be something that is going to be key for him moving forward. But this is a really positive step against a lineup that still has a lot of talent in San Diego. So you got to be happy with what he was able to produce yesterday. Boy, what else can you say about Freddie Freeman? The, the, the offense was fantastic last night. 11 runs on 11 hits. You got to like that efficiency. The game got broke open by Freddie Freeman, who hit a home run early on. Will Smith, who hit a home run early on. Check out these numbers from Freddie Freeman. 339 on the year. OPS 12. Excuse me. OPS 995. Last seven games, 429 Austin. OPS 1208. He has hits in six games in a row. He has multi-hit games in three uh, in three of his last five games. He's 11 for his last 23. And in that span, 11 for 23. He has a home run, three doubles, two RBIs, Nine runs scored. And this is against Major League Pitching. I mean, this dude, I I don't even understand how you do that against Major League Pitching. Yeah, I don't know how you do that, too. And there there cannot be enough good things said about Freddie Freeman, both for his production and for the kind of guy he is, too. And he's added so much to this team. He's been an anchor in this lineup. He is really helping carry this lineup. Uh, him and Mookie Betts are really – are doing a lot to help this team 
and he's just been absolutely unreal. There, there's not enough good things that you can say. The numbers point to uh, an MVP-like season, even though there's two MVP-like mm-hmm. seasons in this lineup. Um, just so phenomenal is what Freddie Freeman's been able to do. No doubt about it. It was good to see Will Smith kind of break out of a, a mini slump. I don't know if you consider a seven-day window, you know, a one-week window, a slump. I, I wouldn't consider it that. But kind of, you know, one of those peaks and valleys, one of those mini valleys, if you will, for Will Smith. But he went two for three last night. He had three RBIs, had the big home run early. Kind of give you, uh, you know, a, a, an example of that. He's hitting under 200 in the last seven games. He's kind of been that guy this year. He struggled for a decent period of time, got back on top, and since then he's kind of been that guy that's that's had a few ups and downs, so it was good to see Will Smith break out last night. Yeah, and he's going to be very much needed because he's that number three behind the Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman. Uh, just incredibly valuable piece in this lineup. I don't necessarily consider a seven-day slump yeah. necessarily a slump just because – Look in the grand picture of the season. That's just that's that's just a smaller period of time, just a small period of time. But um, with him, I have full confidence that he's going to be able to figure things out. I think you want to keep him as healthy as possible going into the postseason. I think that is going to be uh, the most important thing going forward for him. Um, and so if he's able to be healthy, we've seen him produce in the playoffs before. I fully expect him to be able to do that this year going into the postseason. Another thing I think that that is a little bit underrated with the type of, of season he's had to deal with, think of all the different pitchers he has, he's had to catch and try to incorporate all the meetings they've had to have as far as, okay, this guy has this. I know they catch him in spring training. They know each other and all that. But when you look at all the rookies that have come up, all the guys that have gotten injured, the guys the Dodgers traded for, I mean, the, the bag of people and pitchers that, that and the mixes that he's had to and personalities that he's had to mesh together and try to just make seamlessly, you know, hey, offense hasn't necessarily been the number one thing the Dodgers have had to have from him. They've had to have a catcher that's been able to mix all these different pitchers together and make it seamless, as seamless as possible. Yeah, no, and being catcher, your number one priority is to help yes. that pitching staff. And with all of the different arms, with all of the different young arms that he has had to learn, he's had to grow relationships with, and he's had to build some of that chemistry with, um, I am I can imagine that it's been incredibly challenging going mm-hmm. into this season because ideally you kind of want those kind of set guys that you kind of know and have really good chemistry with right away that hasn't been the situation this year for the Dodgers they've had to mix and match they've had to bring up some of their young guys which luckily for the Dodgers they have incredible talent down on the farm so they were able to bring up a lot of really good guys Uh, but for him being able to kind of mix and match with a lot of those different pitchers while also being able to produce at the offensive level that he has yeah um, has been incredibly it's been incredibly uh, just phenomenal to see. So you you have to take each one of these different components and just appreciate the overall big picture of what Will Smith has done. I know we kind of want him to be uh, similar as a hitter as far as Mookie Betts or Freddie Freeman, or at least close to that level. If he, Even if he's not able to produce quite that much, what he can do and what his job should be to do over the course of next month is build the relationships with some of the pitchers that are going to be on the postseason roster. Some of the younger pitchers you might not have had the opportunity to cash with as much. If he's able to help them out a lot and be able to build a good relationship with them going into the postseason and stay healthy, I think those are the two big keys for Will Smith over the course of the next month. You know, it's one thing to, hey, this guy has a slider, he has a fastball, a changeup, all this, that's fine. But that chemistry that you talk about, that's that's a whole different level. You know, just knowing crunch time or just being able to see the look on a guy's face and go, oh, well, this is what he's thinking right now. Just that that bond and that chemistry, that takes a while. And I, I just commend Will Smith 
to you know making this look as as seamless as it has looked because it is not as easy as he's made it look so hey he, he's just a wonderful catcher him and austin barnes as well done a wonderful job uh teaming that together and i've really enjoyed you know it seemed like in the past that whenever a rookie would come up it would be austin barnes catching them they've kind of transitioned will smith into that role as well and he got to catch kyle hurt last night too so i think that shows you right there just how much Will Smith has grown in the pitch calling and working with pitchers over the years. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. And he's going to be needed in the future for the Dodgers when they call up a lot of these rookies, too. We don't know necessarily how long Austin Barnes is going to be catching uh, for the Dodgers as far as being a backup catcher. He's provided tremendous leadership for the Dodgers, but you also want to be prepared. You want to train Will Smith. You want to make sure that he is comfortable taking up a new guy, making sure that he's comfortable at the big league level. And so for him to be able to take that leadership, that ownership of trying to help a lot of these young guys come up and get them situated, especially because they're going to be needed this postseason and for years to come, uh, I think is I think that's a really good point and something that Will Smith is just going to benefit from by taking this uh, responsibility. And he knows from personal experience, I was there in 2019 when he caught Clayton Kershaw in Clayton Kershaw's rehab performance, and then he got brought up. So he has lived that experience of, hey, catching a guy like Clayton Kershaw and maybe being a little bright-eyed and, and a little nervous and having to deal with all that. So he knows what these guys are going through. Because he's gone through it himself very recently. Like I said, I was there uh, front, front row and personal and got to see all of that. So he has personal experience with that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do the Down the Farm segment together with Austin and Day. He was there yesterday. Ryan Fall is going to join this afternoon and talk about a little bit about Rancho. Of course, that was not the greatest game for them last night, especially offensively, although Christian Romero, he turned in a great performance for the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes. So we're going to hash out the, the Down on the Farm segment right here with Austin joining us. So I'm super pumped about that. Oklahoma City, not a lot to talk about. Robbie Erland had a decent start, the veteran lefty. Miguel Vart, John Rooney had another good outing, though, the left-hander we talked about in our last show. And then Miguel Vargas hit a home run. For Tulsa, it was uh, just a clunker. I'm just going to put it to you that way. They lost 12 to nothing. Cody Hosey, Ismail Acantra, they had multi-hit games. Each of those two young men had two hits. Rancho Cucamonga, when you talk about what they did last night, Christian Romero was the story of the show. Rancho, they lost 3 to nothing. They did not score. But, boy, go and watch my video on Christian Romero. That changeup was huge, man. This is a young man out of Mexico, just 20 years old. His fastball was really good. He had just kind of a couple of different shapes to his left-turning slider. So he had the changeup turning right. He had the slider cutter. I don't know his exact pitch mix. I'll have to message Ramon. They're very busy right now. I'll wait till it slows down a little bit for to message Ramon and, and get uh, Christian's exact pitch mix. But he did have a left turn. It looked like a slider to me. Sometimes it looked like, or uh, sometimes it looked like a cutter. Sometimes a slider. The changeup and the big fastball. And uh, his ERA this year, Christian Romero, just three seventeen, WHIP one oh six, giving up just one run in his last two starts, which is ten total innings. So Christian Romero looked really, really good last night for the the single A Rancho Cucamonga Quakes. That was the highlight of that game. Again, as they lost three to nothing. But then last night you were there, Austin. Let's dive into the high eight Great Lakes. Justin Robleski, what a season he has had. Jake Vogel had two hits. The Great Lakes Loons did lose, but there was some great action. Yeah, no, you talk about just looking at the overall big picture. Uh, one, it's incredibly exciting to be a part of postseason baseball whenever you get postseason baseball. And luckily for the Loons, they've had quite a bit of postseason baseball recently. Obviously, last year they had series against Lake County, fell up, fell a little bit short in that series. This year they get against a Fort Wayne Tin Caps team that has gone through a lot, honestly. Uh, they've gone through battle through a lot of adversity. About a month ago, um, they had an incredible offense, and they called up half of their lineup yes. to double A. 
and they call up their pitching staff. And so they've gone through a lot. They kind of mixed and matched a lot of different hitters and stuff. Uh, and so you're going against a tough team and in a great stadium, a great yeah. fan base. There's a lot of really the good best, people out the there. Way. Oh, yeah. No, Fort Wayne's was, phenomenal. Fort Wayne's been voted many times the best minor league city in all the United States. Hey, they're broadcasters. I've mentioned this a couple of times. I don't mean to cut you off. I'm going to let you finish here in a minute. But, hey, I've mentioned a couple of times. It seems like some of the broadcasters around the Midwest League are a little snarky towards the Loons, maybe a little jealous of what of what the Loons have with all the, the Dodgers, you know, and all that. Not the Fort Wayne 10 caps, man. Their announcers are first class. The facility is first class. The fans are first class. I know it's the Padres, uh, Padres High affiliate, but I cannot tell you how impressed I am with what Fort Wayne does. Oh, absolutely. And you can see that by everything at Fort Wayne, just the just the environment, just the way they put things on and just the people around there are incredibly nice. Mm-hmm. And so I'll get to experience that a little bit. I've been to Fort Wayne in the past and it was ele- electric last night. The fans for Fort Wayne showed up. You had two days to sell tickets and they drew a good crowd over there and they were into the game last night too and so we go into the game um and robleski is on the mound and let me tell you something just the journey that i've seen justin go on this season has been phenomenal and it kind of it kind of went full circle a little bit last night um so the first time that i got to see robo pitch this season was in fort wayne it was actually towards the end of april um you and i kind of had a conversation about that too and it was it was kind of a struggling start for him that night. He gave up four runs uh, and the crowd was kind of really on him quite a bit. They were kind of, it was thirsty Thursday crowd. So of course yeah. you're going to get a lot he of. He had some really electric moments in that game. And then every once in a while I let the crowd get to it. Oh yeah. <laughs> it oh yeah. yeah. No, it was, it was kind of one of those mixed bag games. And so, and it was c- coming off a month where he struggled a little bit as so far as results wise. Uh, but just the journey that he's been on since then, you talk about since the end of April, how he's been, he's been the most reliable pitcher on the Great Lakes Loon staff. He's been so incredibly dominant and consistent. And you go into that playoff game against the environment that he had gone through that he had that end of the month adversity and he showed up in a way that there have been few playoff performances like that. I know he gave up two runs. I know he gave up a couple extra base hits, but the swing and miss stuff that he had and the confidence that he had pitching last night um, was special. He kept the he kept the loons in that game. He gave them opportunities uh, to get back and was dominant. And to do that in front of that crowd, to do that in front of some of his family that was there at the stadium that got to see him pitch, um, just the story that he was able to go through was really special. Um, but obviously, the re- end result was not exactly what the loons wanted, and it came down to. A couple things, main thing being during the first five innings, uh, the Loons left 10 runners on base. And that is extremely difficult to overcome if you're not able to do that. However, I view it a little bit of a different way. And this, I think, is what you're going to have to preach if you're on the Great Lakes Loon staff is your uh, the way that you were going through those at bats was good. Yeah eventually the dam is going to break with that. If you continue to put pressure like that on the team, eventually a lot of those runs are going to score. You can't give up. That's the statistician in you, isn't it? (laughs) Yes. Yeah, I know. And eventually you're going to be able to produce runs if you continue to apply the pressure like that. I know right now guys are certainly disappointed. It is a new day. That game is behind us. All you have to do right now is take Thursday's game. If you take Thursday's game, it is one to one. It is a game three in your house, and they're on their heels. If you take mm-hmm. game, if you take game two, you'll have the momentum going into the series finale. That's got to be the focus of the team. Well, just look last year, the Great Lakes Loons in the playoffs. They won the first game, then lost the last two. So, mm-hmm. if you need any evidence further than that, just look. You know, just one year ago, I've talked to Austin Chubb about that a couple times. He said, oh, man, we thought we had him. That's still a series that 
that you know they, they look back on it and go man i wish we would have won that hey i had a chance to communicate with dalton rushing i congratulated him you know kind of like the will smith talk we had you know hey this has been a year where he's dealt with a lot of different types of pitchers and you know different different types of personalities i feel like dalton rushing really made huge strides this year pitch calling working with pitchers and how to handle a staff yeah, no, everything that you have to do as a catcher, he has handled and handled through a lot of adversity, not just with the different pitchers, but with the injuries that he's had to deal with, too, with the, some of the battles he's had offensively dealing with those injuries. He's b- battled through a lot, but just the the talent that he has is real. And there's a reason why he is so highly thought of throughout the industry. He's incredibly good just missed a home run yesterday it was about probably a foot foul i don't know exactly how long it was uh that would have given the loons a lead kind of early in that game um but just defensively as far as catcher is concerned too he's added a ton and he's going he's going to be he's going to be special and it's been an incredible talent to watch excited to see him go for the next hopefully week and a half or so All right, man. Hey, this has been a great show. Put the Down on the Farm segment together with the Dodgers. It's winding down for the minor leagues. So as this show winds down, so final thoughts, Austin. Yeah, no, um, obviously, I think the big takeaway that for both you and I, for the big league club is Kyle Hurt in his debut. Both incredibly excited to see him be able to perform, see him get an opportunity at the big league level, excited for what he's able to do in the future. And then for the postseason, I I was had a chance to listen to Rancho just a little bit. I know they struggled offensively, uh, but pitching was still good. Same thing with the Loons, and you have to take it one day at a time, win the next game, win on Thursday, because if you win on Thursday, the door is open in the series, and the crowd's going to be electric in Midland. I'm so excited to be able to do that, to be able to celebrate this team and be able to hopefully be able to see them put on a winning performance. And crowd is 100% behind them and excited to see what's going to happen. So the next game is in Midland, correct? Yes, it's going to okay. be in Midland. It's going to be Maddox Bruns on the mound. Uh, it's and it's going to be one that they're going to be going all out to win that game. And I'm excited to see how, what they're able to do and just see the atmosphere that Midland is going to have, that Dow Diamond's going to have mm-hmm. for them. Because there's this team has meant a lot to this city. This team yeah. has meant a lot to the people. Uh, around the community and so if you're in midland at all if you're in rancho thursday friday um take the time to go to these games because you don't know how many more opportunities you're going to be able to see some of these talents uh and to be able to cheer the mama on i know means a ton to them and so get the opportunity to do that uh, if you if you have that opportunity and hopefully cheer them on, cheer on some of the Dodgers affiliates to a championship. Kyle Hurt, Emmett Sheehan, Gavin Stone, all three were in Great Lakes last year. So guys that are in high A Great Lakes, they're a lot closer to the major leagues than you think. So, hey, great show. Appreciate you joining Austin. One last reminder, fans. Hey, if you like this video, if you like this kind of content, go ahead and click that like button. Leave a comment. Tell all your friends about Dodgers Daily. Share this video and make sure and turn on your notifications so we can keep growing. Also, hey, we are open for business. If you or somebody you know has a business that would like to sponsor this show, our Dodgers Daily show that we do three days a week, our Dodgers Dogs show that we do on Wednesday nights, and or DodgersDaily.net or any other social media platforms, just leave a message for me, DM me, or you can email me at DodgersDaily73 at gmail.com. That's DodgersDaily73 at gmail.com. So as always, I'd like to thank you for tuning in and say go Dodgers.